Here we go with another episode of Short Shifts, the Hockey Think Tank podcast. I am your driver on this magic carpet ride. It's not Aladdin today. It's me, a one tover Scott, and my guest, Jeffrey Lavecchio, not Princess Jasmine. It's Jeff Lavecchio, not a poo. <laughs> a poo the monkey? Yeah. Uh, no, a boo. A boo. Yeah. Damn it. A boo. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Wasting a lot of time here. I got a really good one. Vex has no idea what the topic is. We got 10 minutes on the clock, a little bit less than that right now. Vex, you ready for this one? Give me it. Okay. Body checking. Let's talk about some hitting. Let's talk about some hitting. So I had a parent reach out to me, uh, who's a parent coach and their kid is becoming a Bantam hockey player, wondering about what's the best way to teach how to hit, how to check. So, I'll leave this to you, the meat of the podcast, someone who did a lot of this back in the day. Vex, if you had some advice for some coaches who need to teach the best way to body check, start hitting, go. Man, this is honestly such a good question. Um, And to be 100% completely honest, it's something I've never like coached from level zero. You know what I mean? I've done it. I went through it um, when I would come back and be coaching teams in the summer and stuff like that i was always coaching older teams who had already been taught how to check so like yeah but some of those kids didn't know how to check right and they didn't know how to check either (laughs) so So i'd be (laughs) it'd be a lot of like stick pressure body look at the chest don't watch the puck like like more things like that it wasn't like okay this is level one um but i will tell you this my mom um so when i got to checking age the, the, the year the summer going into tryouts for my first year of checking uh, my mom was uh, working for a junior A team and she had to coach Rick Zombo, who's the head coach of Lindenwood uh, Division One. Yeah, great guy. He took me out to stick and puck and showed me like how to check like for like an hour. Like those were my first checking ever intro to anything. Um, what I think was really cool, like looking back at that. It's like, it's kind of scary. You know, I actually did. I literally did a mentorship call yesterday with a player who's in his first year of checking, who's one of the best players on the team. And he shies away from contact quite a bit. He said it, his parents said it, we got on the call. We talked about some things. Um, but for me, one of the best things that I think Rick did with me was like, he started like kind of up against the boards and like checked me and he's like, do you hurt? Are you fine? are you okay? Like, you're fine. Yeah. Like I played in the NHL. I just checked you. You're fine. Right. Okay. You know, like, so that was kind of like, just like that little thing was like, okay. Cause you got to think guys, especially coaches out there, players are going to be nervous about this stuff. You know, they've never, they, they've watched the NHL and seen guys get trucked uh, and run over. And so obviously at their level, it's not going to look like that. So you want to start with the comfortability, but I would talk about, like, I would first talk about like balance on your skates balance on your skates where should your chest be when you go to hit guys because this is also something that i didn't learn until i was in the ahl i've talked about this on the podcast uh mr v paul vincent like world famous skating coach um for the pros he was our skating coach with the bruins and after the first practice oh was he really yeah he he came up to me actually was probably i probably was there for a week so after like my fifth practice or something he was on the bench and uh i was one of the last guys out there because i was a rookie just working on stuff and he was like, Hey man, like you're a great skater. You're super fast. Can I, can I give you some pointers? And I was like, yeah, please. And he said to me, how do you throw a baseball? So I threw it. How do you swing a tennis racket? So I pretended to swing a tennis racket. How do you take a slap shot? How do you do everything in sports? Like showing, making me show them all these things. What do they have all in common? And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know. (laughs) And he's like, your chest is up. And I was like, oh, and he goes, whenever you go to hit somebody, you try to hit them so hard and your skate, you're trying to skate so fast to run them over that you drop your chest. When you drop your chest, your foot doesn't stay on the ice as long. When your foot doesn't stay on the ice as long, not only are you not as efficient, not as fast. Also, you have no balance. So that's why when you go to hit guys, you fall over. And I was was like, wow. So like immediately. That's really interesting. Yeah. That one little detail, I started to skate with my chest up way more. And I, I talked to a player today at TPH about this specific thing, falling over and stuff. Um, Cause he, he does the same thing. He, d- he drops his chest. And so it's really important because a big problem of mine was I'd try to go like blow a guy up and I fell over every time. And just by pulling my chest up and being more balanced over my hips, over my skates, I didn't fall over anywhere near as much when I would go to hit guys. So like coaches, like wherever you think you want to start, regress it even further. 
Talk about like what their skate should look like on the ice when they're hitting. What should their arm be doing that has their hand on the stick? Stick pressure body, because the point of a check is to separate the man from the puck, the puck from the man, right? So like, it's not just murder the guy, especially in today's game. Stick We're now on puck and body, baby. Stick yeah, on you know, now sometimes body. in different leagues, refs are calling big hits, especially in youth games. I'm not saying don't try to make them, but like what matters the most is disrupting the player with the puck, trying not to let him make a clean pass, and then you separate his body from the puck, beat him back to the play because you checked him. So those are a couple things that I would say to focus on. Love that. And and I'll flip it to when you talk about keeping your chest up, when you keep your chest up, what are you also doing? You're probably keeping your head up. Oh, well, yeah, you are. <laughs> Which let's not even just talk about how to check, but how to take a check too. Because the first thing in how to take a check is you got to be scanning all over the place with your head up. Looking, looking, looking. That's what elite players do. That's why elite players is elite. They always have their head up and they're always looking around, always looking around, always looking around so they can survey what's going on around them and like initiate what are the threats, <laughs> where are people coming from? Because a lot of times when people get injured, where's their head? It's down or it's a blind side, right? And they just don't see the person coming. That's when people get hurt a lot. So um, I would encourage anybody go back and listen to our episode with Adam Oates or look up Adam Oates clips on YouTube. He's like huge. And John Lounsbury works with him too. They are so big on how to take checks so that they minimize their risk for injuries. It's a huge part of what they do. Um, I'm gonna, not going to do it a service by talking about it much. Um, I would encourage anybody to go look up anything that Adam Oates does because he, he, one of his big, like best ability is availability <laughs> and being able to take, take a hit the right way is just as important as being able to give a hit. I, I think, um, you know, stick, stick pressure into body. So important. Um, play low, like play low with your low center of gravity. Like I always kind of thought maybe this is my way of miyaging the fact that I'm five foot four, but like, I always thought it when it came to like body checking, it was uh, a strength to be lower because when I would go up against a guy that was really big, if I got low and in my show, like I felt like I had more power than that person. The lower you play with your lower body, the more power you're going to have with everything that you do, your skating stride, how hard you hit people, the amount of power you're going to have in, in battles and things like that. And so just like kind of playing low and, and doing that. And, and so I think that, you know, a lot of what checking, I, I want to reiterate what you said here, Vex too. What's the point of checking? that's like the first thing to kind of teach kids. The The point of checking is not to like get on YouTube with a big hit. <laughs> yeah. It's do, great. Cool. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it's great if you do, but at the end of the day, let's say there's, I don't know, 150 body contacts in a game. Maybe one will be a highlight real hit. Maybe, maybe one. And so the importance here is like, what's the point? The point is to separate the person from the puck and then go play on offense, which is a lot more fun than playing defense. And so I, I think that's really important. I also think when it comes to checking, you can't teach checking without teaching angling first. Mm. Angling is the precursor to good body checks. Because if you think about it, like if you're going to line a guy up and he's going due north and you're going due south, it, all it takes is one little tiny move and then that, that person's going to get around you. And you do nothing. And you do nothing. Now, if you end up catching the guy, that's going to be a big hit. <laughs> but Probably not going to happen much. Do you ever at the highest levels of hockey see one person going due north and one person going due south in a straight line? No, because it's all about angles, east, west, north, south. And so you have to teach angling before you teach body checking because that's going to put the checker in a better position to separate the man from the puck and to be able to create that turnover. We got like 30 seconds that. here now. So I love that you said that uh, the other thing I'll add, I kind of said it at the end of mine too. Like it's, you got to hit the guy and not roll off him. That was something I did when I was younger all the time. I was just hitting to hit like you hit him, and then you should be closer to wherever the play is, whether that's you jumping towards the offensive net or you hit them and you beat them back to your net defensively. Make sure you win that part of the battle too. For sure. For sure. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this helps. It's a big one, especially when you get into to ages of hitting. So three, two, one, share the show. Share it. Or else you're dead to me. <laughs>